Hello everybody, Tegan here with High Point. Thank you so much for tuning in to tonight's episode of What is in the Night Sky this month. Tonight I'm gonna to be taking you through a beautiful tour of the night sky in the month of May. We're gonna visit deep sky objects, some galaxies and star clusters. We're gonna bring it home and see what the moon and the planets are up to. So as always, let's buckle in and see what's really out there. For tonight's tour, we're going to be visiting the moon and the planets last. First, we're going to be heading out towards the Beehive Cluster. It's a very prominent and very beautiful open cluster, and it happens to be joining up with Mars this month. Let's take a look. It takes Mars nearly two years to revisit the same area of the sky, and this May we have the opportunity to see it return to the Beehive Cluster in the constellation of Cancer. They'll both appear within the same 10 by 50 binocular field of view around April 21st and onwards. But if you return to the pair over consecutive nights, you'll see the gap of them rapidly close. On May 3rd, the first quarter moon will appear to the upper right, making the beehive all but disappear against the brightened background sky. From May 5th on, the distance between them will widen and your last opportunity to see them together within the same binocular field of view will be on May 17th. While the conjunction of Mars and the Beehive Cluster is going to be a beautiful sight, it's still within the realms of our galaxy. Now we're going to head out past our own galaxy and we're going to visit a very spectacular galaxy, the Sombrero Galaxy. This is a relatively bright galaxy in the constellation of Virgo, and a small scope will show an elongated ellipse with pointed ends. A medium-sized scope will show its dust lane cutting the halo unequally in half, with a smaller portion on the southern side. The Sombrero Galaxy is especially a sight through large telescopes and under dark skies. If your telescope is large enough and your sky is dark enough, you should be able to see depth of the galaxy within the image, almost looking like a photograph. It's absolutely incredible. Now for this next target, we're gonna keep the tour outside the realm of our own galaxy and we're gonna look at Messier 64, the Black Eye Galaxy. Small or medium-sized scopes will show this galaxy as a conspicuous oval with a large, bright, non-stellar core. You'll need a large scope to show the dust band that gives this galaxy its name. Look for it to the northeast of the core. Again, when you're viewing galaxies, dark skies and a larger aperture is definitely recommended. As far as astrophotography goes, this is another great object for longer focal length telescopes like a Newtonian, an SCT, or an RC. Several hours of exposure could get you a pretty incredible image. Now for Messier 64, we will bring it back within the realms of our own galaxy, and we're gonna take a look at Messier 3, a fantastic late spring globular cluster. Messier 3 is one of the best globular clusters in the night sky. M3 looks like a fuzzy star through binoculars, while a small scope will show a bright, circular, and a compact cluster with some resolution at around 75 times. With a large aperture telescope and dark skies, the globular cluster can be resolved to its core and will resemble diamonds on a black velvet background. And finally, the last stop on our tour tonight in the month of May is Algorand a double star. This is a pretty double star for almost any size telescope and the pair are easily split at a low magnification of around 35 times. The primary appears white with a much fainter rusty colored secondary making it for a nice color contrast between the two. I often mention that double stars are a great target for that beginner amateur astronomer. They're easier to find, they're bright, and you don't need high magnification to view them in their entirety. And specifically, a double star that has two stars of different colors, like this one, white and rusty colored, makes for an incredible sight through an eyepiece. Being able to see the star color and the temperature at which it burns is quite incredible. Now that we're finished with deep sky objects on our tour, let's bring it back and let's see what the moon and the solar system is up to this month. Uranus is in conjunction with the sun on the 17th and therefore isn't visible this month. Jupiter glints in the evening twilight but is rapidly losing ground against the sun. You'll find a thin crescent moon nearby on the 27th and 28th. Mars continues its journey through Cancer and remains observable with a telescope for a short time after twilight. A first quarter moon hangs above it on the 3rd and then returns as a crescent on the 31st. Neptune finally becomes observable in the morning sky before the onset of twilight from around mid-month onwards, but the pre-dawn hours belong to the remaining planets. 
Saturn appears to the right of Venus at the start of the month, with a pair being visible from about 30 minutes before sunrise. They'll then separate, but look out for a waning crescent moon skipping between them on the 22nd to the 24th. If you want a challenge, try your luck with Mercury during the first half of the month. It'll appear very low over the eastern horizon, and you'll probably only have 10 to 15 minutes before sunrise to spot it. So that is it for our tour in the night sky for the month of May. If you've been able to photograph any of these popular targets or view them through an eyepiece, let us know what kind of gear you used in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss any future What's in the Night Sky content or some incredible astrophotography and astronomy product reviews. Again, I am Tegan with High Point. Thank you so much for tuning in. Clear skies.